Hello, welcome to Talk Education's Boarding School Focus. I'm Lucy Williams and this is Joanna Parry-George. Today we're talking about what to keep in mind when choosing a boarding school. So Joanna, I'd love to start by looking at co-ed or single sex. Which actually I would tie that up into the second point we're going to talk about, the admissions. Yeah, good idea. But key thing, obviously, is what environment would your child thrive in? Would it be a single sex environment or a co-educational environment? Um, I actually thought that my, I'd send my daughter to single sex and my boy to co-ed. We flipped it completely the opposite way because I know my son now would and does thrive in a single sex and my daughter in a co-ed. They, are, they can be really different environments and they can be stimulating for some children. Others might struggle. So do think about that. And that goes hand in hand with when the admissions process starts and when they... Traditionally, a boys' boarding school would start at 13. As boys accepted girls and they became co-ed boarding schools, they also tend to start at 13, whereas a girls' pathway would tend to start at 11 plus at a girls-only boarding school. So that leads us into the admissions process. Even if you're starting at 13 plus and your child is 13 turning 14, the time to start looking, I'm afraid, is when they're eight or nine. Yes, and I think that that's something that's really important to note about the boarding schools versus day schools, is, is that you get, to ch get a chance to visit the, the boarding schools an awful lot more, don't you? So yeah, whereas nine or 10 might seem terribly young to start, start early. And I would also think about the fees. There can be a huge difference in the cost of fees from between some boarding schools. And the scholarship provision, which may offer a lot of fees, a very small amount of fees, or may open the doors to bursary provision. So let's talk about the different kinds of boarding that are on offer. Absolutely. There are as many models of boarding as there are boarding schools. Not quite, but you get my gist. A full boarding will be an exeat or a going home for a weekend, generally every three weekends. And then obviously you have half terms and holidays on top of that. However, even within that model, there will be what we call floating exeats, where you can have an extra weekend at home or there'll be plenty of time to see your parents for Sunday lunch or um, Saturday supper. So it's not being locked away forever. Weekly boarding would traditionally be going home after sports on a Saturday at five, coming back before supper on a Sunday at five. Even that's expanding now. So many weekly boarding options. You can go home after school on a Friday, come back Monday morning. And then on top of that, flexi options, which might be boarding every Wednesday and Thursday or every Monday. And then what I call B&B &B boarding or occasional boarding, which would be that you can stay after a play rehearsal or a disco on a Saturday night. So it's a really important question to ask when you visit the schools to really get under the skin of what the structure is. And also, how do, you know, how is boarding structured? You know, is it in houses? Look at the houses. Boarding is in houses. Many are vertical, so 10 children per year going up the school with mentors within the house. Others are horizontal, so a separate sixth form house or a separate house at the beginning of the school, which of course is a great way to make friends across the years. So it's choosing what suits your child, isn't it? In choosing terms where of... they might thrive. Yeah. And then the key thing to think about is weekends. How full is it on weekends, especially if you live far further away? What's the structures like? What's on offer? How many children are there? So you talked about the different kinds of boarding, but what about you know, where the school's sort of located? Does that have yeah. a bearing? And how far away should we be Absolutely. from Absolutely. Well, there's no right or wrong answer. Some schools are in the middle of towns or cities. Will the children thrive having access to the town and being able to go out and use facilities? Others are on a campus. Everything's in one place. Is that better for your child? Distance. Some schools, uh, parents come from two, three, four hours away from London up to Scotland from overseas, which can make for more of a community feel sometimes at that school over the, on weekends. Others have a much more localised radius of parents who'll be travelling from half an hour. E neither is right or wrong, but do think about going to visit, going to pick up for a weekly boarding, going to watch a match. If it's a two hour round trip, a two hour each way, it's a four hour round trip. How doable is that? On the flip side, going to watch a rugby match on a Saturday afternoon peters out after the first year or so. Think about transport. 
Many schools will have buses or supervised train from, from major hubs, major cities, London and airports, and that can be really crucial. Let's talk a little bit about what the major differences would be, you know, from the academics that are offered within a day school and the boarding school. Yeah, absolutely. The key thing about boarding schools is that they have the ability and the facilities to offer more GCSE options, maybe the IB alongside A-levels, some BTECs, and unusual subjects that might not be on offer at day schools, whether it's astronomy GCSE or sports science BTEC. It's often really worth looking at that for that because they'll have potentially the space, the um, faculty and the facilities to be able to offer a wider range. So co-curricular, one of the main well, reasons yeah. I would have thought you go to a boarding school. So well, could you talk a little bit more about that? The world's your oyster. I yeah. mean, how many clubs can you possibly dream of? And it's not just after school. It's lunchtime, it's after school, and it's in the evening, and it's, all and it's Saturday night, and it's all day Sunday. There's more than you could possibly dream of. But it's not just that. It's the 24-7 community. It's yes. everything that ties in that's on offer there. But the key thing I'd think about, if there's a particular sport or hobby that your child thrives on and wants, does the school offer it? You think they all do, they might do, but is it a major sport or is it just a club? If they really want to play rugby five days a week, check the school offers that. They don't all, so do look into the detail. So to sum it all up, to sum it all up, co-ed versus single sex, and that's tied in with the admissions process. When you start and when you start looking and visiting, the type of boarding, the type of model on offer and the type of houses and the structure of the school, the location, the geography, how does that fit into your family and siblings, co-curricular programme, the clubs on offer and the whole community basis and weekends, what happens at weekends and the academic programme, what's on offer. And if, if all of those details you'll find on our site and you can compare and contrast all of these on our site. Exactly. Good luck. Thank you.